Hello and welcome to the Akitsu tutorial series focus on skinning workflows. In this video we'll go over our duo skin workflow which lets you work on two different skinning layers. Unless you're working on a very detailed face, for example, this workflow should get you some solid foundations and uh, moving in the right direction. Final touches will be down to manual painting in the future. To follow along with this tutorial, your 3D model should be skin bound. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using the Sky Surfer test model included in the Akitsu installation package. Feel free to practice and learn with it. Make sure you are in the paint and check mode to work on your character skinning. You can do that by going to the character bank menu and selecting paint and check. Additionally, please verify before you do any of this that you are in the rigging mode by verifying the active icon in the lower right hand corner. Here are a few preference settings you should learn. We're going to go into the skin preference settings here. Low smooth strength and high smooth strength settings let you define the number of passes for our delta mush algorithm when defining falloffs. Obviously the higher the number the smart the stronger the smooth. We recommend leaving all these at default settings. Additionally, in the decorator preferences, you'll have the ability to manage and change various aspects of joint display data as well as skinning overlay data. By enabling our joints, you can see that the joint display mode is in light. If we flip it to classic, you can have sometimes a better view of your how your mesh interacts with the the joint influences. Under light mode you have two options joint size factor for standard areas. By increasing this the light areas of density will be larger making them easier to pick when in animation mode. While the higher density areas will be smaller. The idea behind this is the high density modes are easier to pick with the proxy mode picking. You can always turn these up or down. Additionally, pivot size factor handles orientation. If we turn those on, you'll see that we have orientation pivots enabled. By increasing the active pivot size, the joint we have selected showing its pivot will increase or decrease. To show all the other pivots at an increased size, just increase the pivot size factor for the unselected joints. While checking our skin bound model, we notice that the armor pad here on the forearm was not smooth correctly. You'll notice that it falls off and in a natural way, and if we rotate it, it just doesn't look believable. We'll fix this by going back to our rigid skin layer highlighted here. Click the button, and you'll notice that the dual skin icon will show two straight lines, meaning we are editing the rigid zones. What we see here is not the final skin, but the base layer that will be used to calculate the smooth falloff areas. We can perform a simple vertex selection and extend this element by holding down the shift key, selecting a point, and selecting all connected vertices by pressing the star key on the numpad. Once here, we will set the weights to one using the weight ramp so that the whole part is considered rigid and weights are smooth beyond this area. We can see the process smooth skin button has gone red. Akitsu is letting you know that the final skin needs to be recalculated according to this new rigid zone. Before we do so, let's have a look at the picker. The symbols opposite the joint names let you know which smooth strength will be used to calculate falloffs. A lock will also let you know that the influences are locked. We'll make sure to reset our selection with an empty target here before going back to free paint mode to make sure we process the skin without any constraints. The three little waves let you know we're using a stronger smooth option. Let's change it and go with the lower option symbolized by a single wave. Now we can hit the process skin button. Note that we've gone back to the second layer of our dual skin automatically. The dual skin button shows 
the waves, which means we are visualizing the final skin data. Let's test it out. You'll notice this binding might be a little rough in areas, especially on the forearm folds. In this case, we can go back and reset the forearm to a smoother bind by clicking it till you see three wavy lines. If we process the skin again, you'll see that the arm now folds a bit more realistically. If you're dealing with a robotic character, you may want to deactivate the smoothing algorithm entirely by clicking the joint you want and toggling it till you see the off text. Here I'll just correct another rigid zone using the brush rather than the weight ramp. I'm going to once again select a vertice on the um, mesh. Use my star key to select to select all connected vertices to isolate out uh, this portion of the mesh that I want to use. I'm going to paint weights, but first I'll go into my rigid zone mode. And then I'm going to click my uh, paint weights, verify I have add remove weights and paint through model uh, both enabled right up here. I'm going to paint in the weights of this lower calf joint to assign the vertices. Uh, and then um, in doing so, you'll notice that the uh, process smooth skin has turned red, telling me I need to recalculate this zone, and I'll do that. Here you'll see that the calf uh, is now controlling 100% um, this um, knee pad here. But I have some other unwanted uh, vertices following along with this uh, calf here, um, and that's the jacket, so I'll handle that right now. But going back into my rigid mode, again, I'm going to um, uh, select some vertices here, but uh, just by holding down shift and clicking, and then using my star key to select everything. I'll then right click instead of um, left clicking this time to remove all the influences from the jacket, or sorry, from the uh, calf to, to the jacket, so that uh, the uh, none of the influences from the jacket are no longer following this lower calf. And then again, I'm going to go back into my, um, I'm then going to process my sc smooth skin for this. And in doing so, we'll notice that now my lower leg no longer controls the jacket as those influences were removed from that. By reviewing your model and reprocessing the skin after each faulty part, you should be able to get a much more satisfying skinned model. In the next video, we'll explain weight distribution rules and how to lock influences so that you can paint and edit your skin with more finesse.